feet together. So it's any rate, we're side. All right, so we got it. Hey, Kayla, how you doing? Uh, Jake, uh, just you again today, no McKenna, right? Okay. Is yeah. that Jake? It looks like McKenna. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not good looking enough. <laughs> All right. Well, good. All right, good. So, um, so let's just do a little warm up, and then we'll do some stretching. All right. So let's just start. Start with this light, light punches, punching back. Ready? Go. Hey. 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 motion but it only does that motion because your hip is coming together that's how you get in the torque to the punch right so just exaggerate that motion there, right ready go hey 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 Some mic hands now, right? Right there. Ready? Go. Hey. 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 All right. Good. So now I'm gonna do mic hand. The opposite combination, right? Ready? Go. Hey. One, two. Put it back again. Hey. Go back. Hey. Good. Hey. Good. Hey. Back. Hey. All right. Good. Okay. So now let's do some some legs. So just keep coming back. My getting ready. Go. Hey. Nice and light. Hey, 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 and switch other side. Ready, hey, 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 hey. Okay, side kick. So just start and go one way and come back and the other way. All right. So do go for ten each side. Thank you.
Um, so some back kicks now, so just think, turn the heel right and just go. Ready? And go, hey! Like that. Hey! Remember, don't look at your foot when you're kicking. Hey! It's the only one you don't want to look. You don't have time to look. Hey! 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 Yes. Hey! All right, good. <clears throat> okay, just stretch out a little bit now. Just get the hamstring nice and loose. Get the rest of the body. All right, good. So I'm just going to start off. We're just going to do some stances. Something I came up with for the kids. Um, it helps them a little with the stances, but it's going to work out your legs a little bit too. Um, I think a lot of reasons why uh, cutters are not have um, a lot of flow in them. There's no fluidity in them. It's because sometimes the legs are a bit weak, so they they kind of like have to move fast because they can't hold a position for very long. Right? Muscles can't stay in one position. Like try to hold this position on one leg for a long time. The muscle gets tired. <clears throat> so what we do, we just start off and just think cat stance, forward stance, forward stance, cat stance, forward stance, forward stance. So just, I'll, I'll go through it slowly. And then from here, we go forward stance, forward stance, we do three of those, and you're going to come back, cat stance, cat stance, and then we do this peanut go down move, and peanut go down move, here, right? So just, that's just a sequence of stances, and it helps you to uh, get, the, get everything working, you know, all the, all the technique correct, so you're going to do it slowly. So do it with me, right? So first one, so you're going to go to your right first, right? It doesn't really matter. We're all going to do the same way. So first thing that happens is your heel turns because you're going into a cat stance. No matter what stance it is, this is a horse stance, you know, your heel's going to turn this way, right? So go cat stance now. Sit in that stance. All right. Now from here, you're going to step into forward stance, nice and slowly. Make sure you've got the third leg, right? Back leg nice and strong. Okay. And then from here, I'm sorry. Start again. This is it. So we're here, we we'll go cat stance, right? And then from here, you're just going to go forward, same leg, get to horse stance. Don't step over. Now from here, we rotate into the stance. Now we turn the back foot and we come back into cat stance. We check everything, make sure the toes are 45 degrees. And then we're going to go forward into forward stance. Then we're going to rotate the back leg. Shikodachi. Now we go with this leg first into forward stance. And again, forward stance. And again, forward stance. 
And my quads are killing me because I've been doing this for a couple of days. And now they're really sore. You know how you wake up the next day after you work out? So I have a hard time with this. Now you got to step back to cast stance. Hold it. Check the back foot. Make sure that your hip is in position here, right? I step back again. That's two. Now you're going to go to the side, 90 degrees, and turn the heel on this foot. And make sure your butt's not sticking out, right? We want to make sure this butt is in. Knees over the toes, one. And then you pivot so your heels will turn, two. All right, and back again. I have a hard time going slow because it's quite painful now. <laughs> All right, so you remember how to do it? It's simple, right? Cast stance, forward stance, forward stance. Cast stance, forward stance, forward stance. Forward, forward, forward. Cat, cat. One of these, one of these. Do it a few times by yourself. Make sure you got it. So check that back foot. The first thing to go is that back foot when you turn. You guys remember how to do it? You okay? All right, good. So, so the, part of the trick is, to watch, I'm gonna do a, a, a step over, right? So I'm in a forward stance like this. So don't do this. See how I go up and down? I have to stay at the same height. All right? And we don't wanna go like, you know, to here, and then everything goes together. It would go together when you do it fast, but you can't go fast. You can't fall slowly. Right? Gravity falls at a certain rate. That's it. Right? It falls at a certain rate. So um, when I step over, I have to keep this leg bent. See it's bent? Uh, it's still bent. So my foot's going to get there ahead of me. All right? You're going to do it at that speed. That's where you're going to feel these muscles are going to start getting a good workout. Going to give you strong legs, right? If you can do it slowly, then when you do it fast, you'll be able to do it perfectly when you do it fast, right? Sometimes we do it fast, we leave something out. But we're getting there too quickly. So the, the trick is when you do a step over, this leg has to drive you forward. It has to drive you, right? But what happens a lot of times is we step and then we use gravity and we fall into it. This leg is dead. So the trick is bring this one here and then it goes in. So there's a constant tension happening in my legs all the time, right? So try to do that now. So the first move, watch. I'm going to cast that. Now from here, I'm not going to just lift my foot. I'm going to push my foot. If you can see my foot sliding, I'll do a little closer. I'm here. I'm not lifting my foot. I keep the pressure there, right? I keep the pressure back. I push. And then I let the knee go. Now from here, I got grip on the floor. I'm going to use my toes now to grip the floor. So if I was standing on uh, paper, I'd be tearing the paper with my feet. I'd be ripping the paper. All right? Now how do I get back to cast hands from here? I can't go uh, like this. 
I have to use this leg to pull this one in. So everything's working here, right? And then I'm going to use, I'm going to tear the paper, rip the floor, push. All right? And now I'm going to rip the paper. Here. So the feet are, can you see my feet? They're doing this. Feet are ripping the floor. All right, so go through it once like that and see how you feel. If you're not sweating, you're not doing it right. Go ahead. If you got sneakers on, you might have a little too much grip. I don't know. Let's see. Be careful. But you're going slow enough that you get to feel every little piece of it. So don't step over on the first ones, Dan. I do that sometimes. I mean, you, you could, but for now, just go same side. Don't, don't step over right now. You, later on, we can do stuff like that. That's it. Check that back foot, right? Back foot is always 45 or less, unless you're in a horse stance. That's the other way. All right. So, so watch from here. If I'm in a regular forward stance, it's a bit too short for shikodachi. So my heels have to turn. My, my toes have to turn. And if I get the width, right? The toes have to turn. Go ahead. Feel grip, feel grip. Don't lift your foot off the ground. Pressure. Burn. That stamps. That stamps. She could dodge. Yeah. You step over. No, no. Cast stance. Forward stance, she got that. Okay. Cast that forward stance, she that. Feel the twisting when you feet, yeah. Legs stun of her, right? That's good. Yeah. You're doing it right. Make sure you check your back foot in the cast stance and the forward stance, guys. Keep checking it. I see even in black belt levels and even in the world tournament, I see people doing kata and their back foot's not in the right position. The habit of what you create is not to break it. Yeah. Okay, good. So after we do both sides, now you're in shikudachi, right? How do you get from here to here? You can't go up. And you can't go fast. Because what happens when you do it normally, you go fast, and you don't always have a connection. You just kind of get there, and then, okay, I'll figure something out when I get there, right? So what you're going to try to do, and I have to have a hard time because my legs are killing me. I have to come in this way. All right? Same height. So this knee has to stay bent. Give that a try. You can do both sides if you want, just to practice it. Make sure you got it. You can go this way too. Bring it in. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. There has to be no jerkiness about it. It has to be a constant, smooth, flowing motion. Anybody watching goes, oh, you're just doing this so smooth, but they don't realize how much of a workout you're getting when you're doing it. Right? Building up strength, yeah. 
Hey, Clara, that's quite good. Be careful not to do too much of this kind of a thing. Make sure you move vertically. Move vertically. Yeah. Don't let the body turn. You're doing it pretty good, though. It's quite nice. Yep. This is like the Tai Chi, right? You see Tai Chi? They do this kind of stuff. That's why it's so good for your body. So healthy for you. Nice and slow. The slower the better. And you have a constant consciousness while you're doing it. You're not just blooping in for this move and then blooping out and blooping in over here. You're constant, it's continuity right through the motion. All right, good. Okay. So that's something to go back to, you know, practice it. You know, the more you do it, the better your legs are going to be, the stronger they're going to be, right? So let's think of gin. So gin, you know, normally what happens is we kind of fall backwards, boom, right? You're going to, what you're going to do now is you're going to actually drop first. Drop. And come into position, right? And now how do you get to here? If I'm here, I can't just go straight there. I have to come in. I'm in this position, stay the same height. Okay, and then move. In, right? Move. I'm not just turning. I'm turning from the ground first. I'm squeezing my knees together. Turn, oh, in position. All right? Now from here, I'm going to turn again, so I have to squeeze my knees, squeeze the knees in, and then pulls me around, up a block, all right? And stay the same height. And you see the speed I'm doing it at? Do it, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, I'll get it. Let's do it. Slow motion. Everything slow. From the beginning. You know Jin, right? Yeah. Good. Normally your body would move first and your foot would catch up with you, but you can't do that slow motion. So your foot has to go first and your body catches up, right? It's okay, because it's a slow motion move.
So Javier, you gotta go slower. Slower than that, try to go slower. That's too fast, watch. Watch me, I'm here, but watch. See how slow I'm going? Now watch the next move. Next move. Next move. Okay, so I'm here. Now watch my punch. That speed. Uh, too fast, too fast. But oh, yeah, do it with me, right? Okay, so I'll do it backwards. Let's see, we're gonna go this. So you're here, right? Do it with me. You're here. Okay. Now watch. Bring your foot. This knee has to stay bent. Bring the foot up slowly, like this. Go ahead. You bring your foot up, right, like this. One. Now step out. Feel my weight is still back, right? Over my back leg. Then I do this motion. Yeah. So you're holding yourself on a bent leg. See where my foot goes? I'm still here on this bent leg. All right? So that's an isometric exercise. It's going to give you a lot of strength without muscles. Not bad. Clara, that was pretty good, but watch. Hold on a second. So what, you're doing a step over punch. You went a little too fast here. Watch. See, I'm staying here, I'm staying here, I'm staying here. My foot's going ahead of me. Then I get to here. All right? If you can, try it. The muscle's gotta get strong enough. Your quads should be killing you right now. This will give you flow. The, the kata won't look anything like this when you do it fast, but you'll have a continuity of connection all the way through your motions. That's a big word, huh? That's it, Clara. Now let your foot go ahead. You have to stay back. Keep your weight back. Let your foot go ahead. Yes. And then push into that knee. There you go. Yeah. Like I said, when you do the cut for real, your body gets there first, your foot will catch up with you. But it's gonna give you that basis to work from. Yeah, looking good, looking good, guys. See, you can't help but get good stances now because you got so much time to figure it out on the way there. Too fast, Jake. Slow it down. Do it again. Let you go a little, go half that speed even. Ready? So slow. Okay. Now come up, feet together. Slowly, 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 slowly. Now let's, no, 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 no. Stay there. Stay there. Go back. Get back to here. Okay. So, you, so now bring your feet, feet together. You bring your foot. You just put your foot up, right? Now keep your weight here and let the foot go first. No, 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 no. See, my weight is still back. Then you can move into position. Yeah, check the back foot, right? Yeah. So you try to hold it on that one leg. Yeah, I go, I'm on one leg like this in a bent position as long as I can. Yeah, that's the hard part. 
controlling your body weight. That's it, Larry. Your foot goes first and then the body. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Who's tired? Everybody should be tired. Yeah. I started doing this when was it? Uh, Wednesday? And I went through all my katas doing it, every kata. And I couldn't I couldn't walk, my legs were shaking, I couldn't step. And I should be able to do that, but I haven't done it. That's a new thing. My legs are getting stronger. Remember, okay, keep the weight back. Keep the weight back, Clara. That's it. Foot goes first. All right. Yes. You do this every day for a week. You'll have no problem with it by next week. It'll be so easy. Yeah. It's like, you know, you come in there and then one leg and you kick and back. All right, good. So everybody stop for a second. So now, get fighting stance and I want you to do a front kick the same way. So watch, I'm here. So I'm going to come in for a front kick. <laughs> All right, try that. Has to be slow, has to be slow. Neat. Make sure that, that don't start kicking on the way. Get the knee up. And then uh, looking at the camera at the same time. Up and kick and back the same way, knee still there and back. Knee up, 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 up. And hold it uh, and back. Yeah. <laughs> <It's hard. laughs> don't, don't get cramps, okay, guys? Stretch it out. But it's good. See if you if something you can't do. So now you got something to work on. Make it, make it. Your kicks will be so much stronger. You know, if you can hold the kick out and hold it out for like a couple of seconds, those muscles have to be strong enough to do that. That means when you kick something, you're gonna have more muscle behind it. It's stronger. It's like you know, I do a thing with the kids. We stand here, and I have to go like this. Same way. Try that. Try to do some side kicks like that. Start with your knee in this position. Now watch my foot. Watch this foot. My supporting foot. It's pointing straight, right? So it has to turn. It turns. Then I kick. Then I got to come back again. I got to turn it back again. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> You do this, you're going to build all the strength in this area. And you'll be really strong in your core. You'll be able to do all kinds of stuff you never did before. Yeah. You feel it? You feel it all in here when you do the side piece.
That's it, Gavin? Yeah. Good. So watch for a second. Watch when I do a side kick. I'm not going to go like this. See my foot? I don't go this way. I go this way. See? Because the kick doesn't want to go like this. That's not a strong kick. The kick is almost like a back kick. You come up this way, now I have to bring my knee in. Like this. Now I can kick. Then you get a lot of strength. More power in your kick. <clears throat> All right, good. So now I do gin the normal way. One. One, two. A little easier this way, huh? Yeah. Good. All right, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna do the, the motion, one, one, two, block, punch, block, punch, and the shikodachi. You're gonna do that normal speed and slow motion. Normal speed, slow motion. So do it like two, three times. Start off slow, then normal, and then slow, and then normal. Go like that, in that kind of order. Very slow. You gotta hold the weight back when you step. Get it over your leg first, and then hold it back while the leg goes, and then shift into it. Now I'm sweating like crazy, and I hardly did anything. Yeah, I find it's my left quad that hurts the most. Could be two reasons. It's my left side, that's my weak side. Maybe it's a little weaker than the other one. But I think we do more right side techniques than we do left in the cutters. They're made for right people, right-handed people probably. And so you always do an extra movement with the right. So you're doing more exercise on the left than you're on the right, you know, when you're doing this. So, so everybody stop for a second. 
So you, you, you might find that the left leg is killing you more than the right leg. I don't know, it's true. It is with me anyway. Um, if you think about Pinot Shodan, right? It's, you know, it's, a, it's a step over punch with the right. And then the left. Then I go step over punch with the right, left, and then the right. So I've just done three step over punches with the right, but I've only done two with the left. You know? So you're doing more and more techniques with the left leg than you are with the right leg. So um, it's another area that lefties are marginalized, that's all. Yeah, it's uh yesterday was International Lefties Day, by the way. Left lives matter. We should ride. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just uh well, what is it? Twenty percent of the population, I think, is what it comes out to, right? Something like that. One one out of every five people. So I mean unless you identify then it's higher than that. It really is. I actually I had so many left-handed people in the dojo. I mean, it was like, I'd never seen it before. Then if I seem to have more, more left-handed people. Just, uh, I don't know, funny thing. But generally, I think it's like one out of every five. So when the kata was made, it was probably made by a right-handed person. <laughs> so, so they didn't pay any attention. Especially back, you know, 300 years ago. <laughs> in some parts of the world, if, if you were left-handed, they beat you till you changed and become a right-handed. In Europe, they used to do that. Yep. The, the Italian word for left is sinistre, which is sinister. So you were owned by the devil if you were left-handed. So they would beat you until you became right-handed. Only the strongest lefties survive. That's right. Imagine the trauma and, and psychological. No wonder there were so many tyrants in those days. <laughs> They're probably all ex-left-handers. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so guys, keep doing this, right? It's, it's hard work, but hey, you go to the gym, you guys probably don't do that yet, but when you get older, that's what you do. You go to the gym to work out to get stronger, to make your body in better shape. Do, do kata. You know, there was a thing that I read about in Okinawa back in the um, early 1900s, like around 1920 something. That was before karate moved to Japan. Okinawa was already owned by Japan. But Japan was uh, trying to get into any war that they could. They were, they were building up for all kinds of wars. They had lots of wars with different people. They've been in China, they've been everywhere. So they were looking for soldiers. And they went to Okinawa and they noticed that all the teenage men were in phenomenal shape. Now, normally the Okinawans were smaller people. The food wasn't that good there. You know, they didn't eat that well. So people were a little bit smaller stature. And they always thought, oh, Okinawa, we're not even going to bother looking there for soldiers because we did bunch of weekend. Well, they, they went there and they looked and they found that all the teenagers were very strong in phenomenal shape. And what it was, was, was a guy called the Itosu Anko. Anko. He was uh, one of the masters from back, back in those days. Well, before that, probably, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 years before that, he introduced kata, karate as it was known back then, into the school system. And they, what their exercise was doing kata and they did kata a lot of kata every day. But when the Japanese got there, they found that these guys were in phenomenal shape from doing kata. They were very strong, very fit, good endurance, and um, they were very agile. You know, they could do different things because the kata built that into them. So it shows you that when you do kata, it builds your body. So you do it like this, it's going to build your body even more, right? So you got to do kata a lot of different ways so you get a lot of different benefits from it. Bruce. You know, it's not fighting. Sparring is a, a different thing again. But kata is important. It's kind of like if you're taking music, you don't just go play songs. You go and you go play your scales. You constantly go back to your scales because that corrects you, stops you from picking up bad habits, all that kind of stuff, right? Well, that's what kata does. It does that to, for you. And if you really get into kata, you find out that it's actually close combat fighting. And it's, got n it's nothing like the way we do it. When you really get into it, it's actually real fighting. It's more like MMA than, than, than anything else is, you know, because it's throwing techniques, there's grappling techniques, there's wrist locks, arm locks, chokes, everything is all in the kata. If you do it right, um, you'll become a good uh, all-round fighter, which is what they had to do to survive back in, you know, hundreds of years ago. It wasn't the referee on the side of the ring going, yame, 
you, know, you hit him in the face, you, know, you, you lose the fight. In those days, it was a lot of people fought and you might die. There were no rules. And that's what the kata it teaches you. So kata is, is good for that, you know, it's good for getting you, keeping you in shape. So do, do this. If you do a kata, do it once this way, I just showed you, and once the normal way. And you watch your kata will get better, you'll get stronger. Your fighting will get better because your muscles will be stronger, you'll be faster. So that better impact when you hit, all this is going to help, right? So keep that in mind. All right, we're gonna, we'll finish it right here because I, I know it's right tough on the legs. So um, everyone line up. Yeah, on Tuesday, all right? We're going to maybe try it again on Tuesday. See how your legs feel. Right. Feet together. Sensei Nirek. Right. What's up? All right, thanks, guys. Keep working on that, right? Yeah. Every weekend, everybody. Thank you, Sensei. Thanks. Thank you, Sensei.